Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I've got a few things to talk about today, but the first one of those is that my um, cor next coronal mass ejection is uh, looming rather close at the moment. It's about a minute away. So let's have a quick look around and see, well, see if we can guess, what, see if we can tell whether I'm prepared for it or not. That's going to be the first thing to worry about. So down here, We've got my steam tanks, as I was talking about in a previous episode. There's 1.7 million steam in those, so that's good. That's more than I... I think it's I think it's more than I need. Um, I can't remember. I, I need to look the numbers up again. Then I've got all of my turbines here on both sides of the, um, of the, of the uh, nuclear reactor system. I haven't got around to building any more turbines going up off the top or the bottom of here yet, which may be my downfall, but we're going to have to see how that goes. If this does, if I don't survive this one, then that's going to be um, what I do next time. We've got the huge banks of um, accumulators. There's some over here. There's, oh, I still haven't got all of the, um, I haven't got time to go down and do anything about that now. I still haven't got all of the power poles in place to get all of these um, linked up and on the on the on the system, which is a bit of a shame. Um, this has kind of snuck up on me. I know it was several hours away last time I was playing, and I just sort of forgot about it and was getting on with other things instead, which is a terrible way to uh, a terrible way to go. But we're going to have to see how it goes. So let's see. Where's my umbrella defence? It's around here somewhere. There it is. Okay, let's have that up. And so we can see it, and we've got this up as well. This is my power requirements. There we go. It's just kicked in. There's the power spiking up wildly. My production is going up to match. That's good. Um, accumulator charge hasn't been touched yet. That's a very good sign. But this is still going up, and it's going up. Well, it's going to peak in a second. There we go. That's peaked now. So now we're starting to pull energy out of the accumulators as well. So you can see over here, this orange line is the power that's being produced by the accumulators going up and up as well. So that is still... Let's zoom out a little bit. You can see how that's rising up. And all the rest of the power usage of my base is completely inconsequential. It's got the umbrella defense of rising and rising and rising. Um, my steam seems to be running out. That's happening much sooner than I expected. Let's... Um, have a look over here. So these are all blazing massively. You can, see, you can see the steam pouring out of the top of these turbines. We've got, still got, I can't tell, um, still got one and a half million steam in there. So that shouldn't be dropping off like that. I don't know why that's falling. Maybe it's due to, maybe it's not able to get the steam through to, to all of the, um, all the turbines quite as it needs to. Okay, there, that's peaked. That's good. That's starting to come back down again. But we're not far beyond halfway and that is very much beyond halfway. Oh actually looking at the steam power production it's no it was doing okay to there it was it's the solar that dropped off so it's happened to hit me at night time which makes it even harder so that's there's been a drop in the production from the nuclear plant from the steam storage here at the steam batteries so that's dropping off but we're nearly there but oh we're at power this is the point where it gets scary um where's it hitting it's hitting down here ripping through this this stone mine down here ah oh, I was so close as well you saw the um and is it is that it has it gone I think it's gone how much steam's left how much steam is left was that just a um a distribution problem um, where are we? Here we are. 1.2 million steam. So yeah, it got through like a third of my, less than a third of my steam. But I just couldn't get the steam where it was needed. So we got that massive destruction down here. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's ripped through the top part of this stone mine. Horrifically. That's, yeah. I, I'm going to need to go and fix that up again. Um, well, actually, I don't need to because there's another big stone mine here. There's loads of stone available in the way. But, okay, that's... To be honest, that's disappointing. Let's have another look at the, um, at the power readouts for the last 10 minutes. So you've got this massive spike here from the um, from from the umbrella defence, and then here you can see is it visible on the one minute one? No, it's not. The 10 minute one. You have a look at about here. You can see suddenly this it drops and then goes flat. That's about the point where the the, the accumulators ran out of power. So the steam was capable of producing this much power, I s suspect. So there's only 
that little area inside that triangle. That was so close. If I'd remembered either to put in the rest of these power poles down here, so these had all been fully charged, or if I come along here and put in some more turbines up and down here so I could have had a bit more power coming out of the turbines, I'd probably have made that. That was really, really close. Oh, gutted. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually quite disappointed that that didn't didn't quite cover the um, cover the the coronal mass ejection. I think it's because it was because it was so close. If it had been miles out and I'd just not been able, and not been able to cope at all, then sure that'd have been that would have been just poor preparation. But it was it was so close that it's just disappointing. Right, let's put a um, rocket pod back in there like that. So one of the I've, I've been thinking about <clears throat> been thinking about what I want to do next. But before I talk about that, there's a couple of other things I want to touch on briefly. So I had some some comments on the videos, which is always nice to hear. I, I like hearing from um, from people who've been watching the videos, and uh, just because sometimes sometimes it, it makes me think of things I just simply not thought of, like better ways of doing things like pointing out that you can use um, vulcanite in, in smelting and it's apparently much more efficient. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, let's have a look at iron plates because that's that's iron ore. Let's look at iron plates because that's something I get through a lot of. Now there's a traditional way. One iron ore makes one iron plate. There's the vulcanite way where eight iron ore and a vulcanite block makes 12 iron plates so you get an extra 50% free in exchange for the vulcanite. I mean that's not to be sneezed at. That's a reasonably significant amount of um, extra extra um, metals. You do need to then use either the industrial furnace or the thermodynamics facility. So it's there's there's a little bit more to it, and it takes six seconds instead of what am I using at the moment? These things, 1.6. Um, but you get so much more out. That's it. so it's faster as well. So that's quite good. But you've got the extra complication of having to feed in the vulcanite as well, and and producing the vulcanite. Now I'm not short of vulcanite at the moment. But I'm also definitely not short of iron ore. Um, I've got a station here, I've got a station here, they've got... Actually, that's gone down really quickly. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be quite so cocky about it, and maybe I should be making it from something else. And that one's dead. Okay. Um, I may have to just um, eat my words there and make, make some new iron mines. There's a nice big one there. And maybe consider going in, ripping all of this out and replacing it with something that, um, that, that includes vulcanite. Um, that might be sensible. We'll have a think about that because I hadn't, I hadn't realised I'd ripped through these two iron patches quite so quickly. That's slightly terrifying. Um, yeah, so I might be going to do that. Because um, on the flip side, though, I mean, then people have also been saying that they've been making, they've been using, they've not been using, they've not been wasting the vulcanite on rocket fuel, which is what I'm doing here. I'm turning basically, I'm using vulcanite for rocket fuel and nothing else. The alternative it sounds like that some people are doing is the exact opposite of that where they're going I'm not wasting vulcanite on rocket fuel it's far too valuable for smelting so I mean maybe there's something in that uh, the, the flip side is if you want to you've got to make the rocket fuel from something and the other way to do it rather than making it from um, from vulcanite is to make it from solid fuel and light oil so you put in basically I think is it yeah 20 light oil um, makes one rocket fuel now the thing is, um, one of the comments I got was saying, well, if you go, in, if you if you get one of your um, oil oil mines like this one, you could just go in there, fill it fill it full of um, fill it full of speed modules, and pack it up, pack it solidly full of um, beacons. There we go. Yes. So so you go in there, fill it up with speed modules, fill it up with bacon, and it should should go. And and that way, even when they get to the point of your oil mine basically being run having run out they'll still be pulling out enough for it to be worthwhile and you can turn all of that into rocket fuel um that might be worthwhile i've as you can see by the fact there aren't any beacons in here i've sort of not bothered with the whole going in and using the rocket fuel as hard as possible and instead i tend to just go over for the um the coal liquefaction route uh, which is down where is my is it this one yes here we go so the coal liquefaction route here so what we're doing here is we're pumping in massive quantities of coal from whatever coal mine is active at the time, and then we're just up here we're turning it, turning the coal into the three types of oil. So that works too. Um, it, 
the the advantage of the the going the um, the oil mine route is you don't have to worry about them running out because eventually an oil mine will get to its minimum yield and it will just continue dribbling it out slowly at that speed but if you fill it up with modules that speed actually isn't so bad um, coal mining on the other hand you do eventually use up the patches so here we've got we've got two million left in this one it's it stopped so we're obviously not getting through it too quickly but it is a concern that you do have to go out find new coal patches so there's one there there's another one there there's quite a lot of it around but you have to go out and build the mines up which is is time consuming and it's an extra thing to do eventually you have to push out and clear out more biters and get more of it or start delivering it from another planet and my Norvis base gets through so much of everything that i don't really want to start shipping bulk ingredients back in here because it's just going to take too long it's just not going to be practical so i don't know have i talked myself into it i'm not quite sure I'm, I'm going to carry on with coal liquefaction for a little while, certainly in some specialist places, but I might look into into bunging loads of modules into these these, these areas as well. I mean, modules aren't too expensive. Um, I think for the, for the relatively straightforward ones, the vanilla ones, um, going up to speed module 3, it's just lots of circuits really. Um, that wasn't what I meant to click. It's just lots of circuits, so you get red and green to make the base of the, the Mark 1s, you, you, you use red and blue and ones to make the twos and so on up up the, ch up the chain you add some batteries in for the threes oh and then you need iridium and machine learning data and so on but you need a lot more for the, for the fours but um but i probably don't need to really use those i could probably get enough coverage from um, from the beacons and from these uh, from the from the from the uh, tier threes so yeah i could i could i could go in and do that so that's something i'm, I'm definitely gonna have, have a think about because it's at the moment I don't have a shortage of vulcanite, so I might just I think I'll probably just carry on using it for rocket fuel. But if I can reduce my reliance on coal, because I do have I do still have the um, the oil smelt uh, the oil smelting the oil um, cracking facilities running here, and I'm bringing oil in and, and using it, so it yeah it's probably it's worth having, and I could always whack in a um, a pump and a query somewhere along here just to make sure I don't use these. If there's if there's oil-based stuff available, where is this fed down? Am I doing that already? I can't remember. It's been so long since I've played with any of this. Um, no, I'm just letting it come in from wherever. Okay, so I could put in a pump in the middle of the, it, somewhere on this on this um, pipe that's running down here, saying that if if there's plenty of plenty of um, petroleum gas, which there is at the moment down here, then don't bother to make it from coal, make it from oil by preference. Then if the oil runs out, we'll still make it from coal. I've got the backup, but it's it gives me it gives me the options. So yeah, that could work quite well. Okay, so that's that's sort of feedback number one. And that's, yeah, there's definitely some things to think about there. Number two, somebody asked me something that I've I've touched on before, and I'm not really sure whether I, and I hadn't really done the maths for it. So having this this query made me sort of think, yeah, I should actually I should actually work this out. So the question is, if you've got if you've got a base up just up in space that's sort of drifting up there happily, but it needs a steady supply of all the resources, what's the best way to get stuff up there? Because you can't get iron, you can't get copper, you can't get glass up in space. They're just you don't have the resources up there, so you need to ship it there somehow. And there are two ways to do it, at least at this stage of the game, there are two ways to do it that I'm aware of. One is that you build up one of these massive cargo rockets, and these hold so much stuff, you can put 500 stacks of whatever you want into them. And so this one is has massive quantities of rocket fuel, I'm not quite sure why, I'm going to have to have a look at that, because that seems a bit odd. Um, and then lots of oils and things up here, and, and so on. So yeah, lots, lots and lots of ingredients, lots and lots of resources in that. The other way to do it is to use the delivery cannons. Now these are, um, they're a bit less flexible. You can only put, a, you can only put um, a handful of different things in them. Like you've got bricks and concrete, you've got most of the raw resources here, and you've got a few of the sort of the slightly more processed resources as well, or, or lots of liquids and barrels, that sort of thing. So you can you can use the um, you can use the delivery cannons to get stuff up into orbit or, or even to other planets as well, and it, and it, that works it works very well. You've you've seen my um, how that's working for me on all in all the different places. At the moment, I've um, I've been doing a bit of expanding here. I've got all of I've got one, two, three, four, five. I think all of these shooting at the uh, space station. 
Uh, this one's shooting at Frost. This one's probably shooting at the space station, and this one's going to be shooting at um, at Myokin once I get it all set up properly. So I, I decided after the last episode, I'm going to ship the ice here and then ship it on from here to wherever I want it to go, because that way I don't have to go out to Myokin and, and fiddle with stuff. And I consider the delivery cannons to be quite cheap. That comes on to what I've been considering. So I looked at the prices for all of this stuff. And to make a rocket, the, the most expensive part of it, is, um, by a long way, is the um, is these things, the cargo rocket sections. You need a hundred of those to make a rocket. Um, and they take quite a lot of ingredients to make each one, as you can see here. There's 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 bricks, there's plates, there's plastics, there's and so on and so on to go, that go into each one of these. And you can see these along the bottom of the... Um, of the thing as well. I, I use the raw ingredients thing in the um, in the game itself to, to, to find out what they what they actually take because I couldn't be bothered to run through everything. Now a few of these are of course processed things. So the steel plates are made from iron. They're they are they're, it's literally so each each steel is worth is literally worth five iron is it six iron. I think it's five. Um, yeah, five iron. So you've got the um, yeah, so some of this, there's a little bit of overlap in some of the things here, but I, I didn't really want to go in and tease out exactly what makes what. Uh, the blue circuits, again, there's a load of copper, there's a load of iron, there's some bricks, uh, there's some sulfur because you've got the acid in there as well. So there's a bit more extra stuff in there from the, uh, from, from the, um, from the blue circuits. The batteries as well, they contain a certain amount of sulfur in the sulfuric acid and some more iron and copper as well, I think, off the top of my head. So... Um, but I didn't actually to make to make the sort of the the actual comparison. I didn't really need to go in and tease out the exact details of this. So that's one rocket section. As I said, it takes a hundred of those to make a full rocket. So you get some some quite big numbers out of that. And you also need the um, the the, the uh, rocket um, what's it called cargo pod space capsule. There we go. This thing. Uh, and there's quite a lot of stuff in that as well. Um, I mean, does any of this make a difference? I mean, it adds an extra thousand onto the onto the onto the bricks. Oh, it adds a lot onto the glass. Actually, there's a lot more glass in there. The iron is fairly consequential. The copper is is a, is a fairly big jump as well. So, oh, and a hundred hundred blue circuits as well. So that's yeah, that's that's a big jump as well. So as you can see, there's there's a lot of extra stuff required there. Um, and also you require a certain amount of rocket fuel. Exactly how much rocket fuel you require depends on where you want the rocket to go to. So I've just put it in a sub, you know, who cares. Um, and then because a rocket, but then on the flip side, a rocket is massive. As I said, you can fit 500 stacks of, of stuff in it. So yes, it takes an incredible amount of resources to make it. But once you've built it, you can send huge amounts of stuff up into space and all in one go you don't need to faff around with sort of firing delivery capsule after capsule after capsule so the fairest way to compare these things i think is going to be to do it on a per stack basis so i've divided all of the um the rocket quantities by 500 uh, i've rounded them a little bit but they're 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 they're, they're close enough to, to within one and that's um so that's given me a, a pretty good idea of what it costs to send a stack of something up into up off to to wherever by by rocket um, I hadn't when I drew this this table up. I admit I hadn't actually looked at the um, at the at the capsule, and I hadn't realised quite how expensive those are. So some of those numbers should be a little bit higher, but they're they're, they're close enough. I then went in and had a look at the delivery cannon capsule costs. Now these are much much simpler. They um and they're much cheaper, but then you can only get one stack into them. However, if you look at the actual numbers we get from this, I think every single number it. I was going to say every single number except sulfur, but when you consider the uh, the blue circuits and the batteries, that might actually bump the sulfur up to well, the six may go up to um, up to thirteen, maybe may go up to thirteen. I'm I'm not sure. I haven't done the maths, but sulfur is not too difficult to get hold of. So I think I'm um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split hairs there, given that everything else is so much cheaper. Especially look at copper and the iron. That's that's an incredible difference there. Um, I think I'm gonna say. I'm going to call it for delivery cannon capsules. They are much, much cheaper. I'm going to stick with delivery cannons for transporting bulk produce around the, um, sorry, bulk resources around my solar system. It, it it's, it's just not even close. So, thank you to the, for, the, for, the, for the suggestion. And to be honest, it is something I should have actually looked at rather than just going on gut feeling and going, oh, rockets look complicated. There's so many different things that go into them. Look at look at all this stuff I've got over here to make the bits for them. Because I mean that's irrelevant. If if they um 
it's not about how many different bits go into them it's how much raw resource is required to build the whole thing up um it's still building i'm not sure what it's building at the moment but it's oh it's, it's making pipes i think by the looks of it to make the these long pipes and the underground pipes okay fair enough um that's not actually rocket parts so that's that's kind of irrelevant um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm glad i had the um the query come in actually because it's it, it pushed me to actually do the maths and work out what the best way to move stuff around is so that brings me on to another thought that yes the delivery cannons are great but they're also extremely limited because you can only send certain things around i mean i can't even send green circuits or red circuits by these things it's just it is literally just ores smelted plates ingots raw materials and, and barrels of stuff and, and explosives actually that's that's a fairly processed thing um capsules and uh, low density structures yeah they're, they're, yeah okay you can send those too but mostly it's just it's just raw materials there's not much stuff that's been fiddled with and processed and so on so that brings me on to my next thought but on my um, space station oh yes actually no no um, another a third thing that I that somebody brought up was was um, they were asking about the um, the how the how the solar systems are arranged so there's a couple of ways to look at this if I go into the uh, the inter Stellum. No, that's not what I want. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is what I wanted. So we're talking about um, where the planets are in relation to the sun. So Kalidus is the is the sun of the Norvis system, or Norvis is one of the planets of the Kalidus system, I suppose, actually. Um, and so, of course, the closer you are to the sun, the more power you get from your solar panels because you've got more more sun shining on them. It's it's, it's inverse square law thing. Um, and then as we, as we look out here, we've got Myokin, which, as, as I observed, is quite a hot planet. You get 112% um, solar. That's, that's that's quite good. Uh, go away. How do I close these things? There we go. If we're in Kalidus orbit, then we get 1,500%. That's a pretty good place to put some to put solar if I actually you know want to do something useful with it. Um, then we've got Norvis, a little bit further out. Here is is 100 percent because that's what everything's based on. And presumably, if I went to one of these planets, these these moons, the moons of Norvis, I get similar amounts of solar. Yeah, we've got 98, 98, 97. So yeah, they're all similar amounts of power. Now Frost is a little bit further out. Yeah, Frost is a is a moon of of Mormo apparently. Um, so that's a lot further out, which is why it only gets the 22% of the um, of the power of, compared to everywhere else, compared to uh, compared to Norvis. We've got these asteroid belts as well. I've not looked at those. Um, I've got methane ice. Other than that, everything else there is stuff that I've got from other places. Uh, so I think until I need methane ice, I'm probably not going to go there. Um, okay, so as I say, um, that's. Frost is way out here, and that's why it doesn't get so much solar, and is why I've ended up building a nuclear power plant out there. The new planets I'm looking at going for, there was one that had a very planty. Oh yeah, it was Tulip. That was somewhere I'm considering going because it's got the Vita Melange. I shall and I shall touch on this in a bit more detail later. That's 81% solar, and there was another one. Um, why was it? I wanted to get the uh, the. There was another the other resource. The this one. Yes. Holmanite, yeah, that was the one. And that's, um... <laughs> that's Henki Yeah, that this planet, the Holmanite planet. I'm, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because it's getting worse and worse and more stare at it. Where's that? Is it a planet or is it a moon? Here we go. It's, it's, it's way out close to frost. So I'm I'm going to struggle with solar on this one. The concern is, I'm, also, I'm not sure where I'm going to get the power from then in that case. We do have coal. So I might be able to use, uh, I might be able to go for traditional steam power because it does have water as well. I've checked this as well. It has a tiny amount of uranium, but not really very much. I mean, that's what 28%, 0% side, 28, 0 10. Whereas frost, which is quite good, we're showing, yeah, much much bigger numbers there. So I don't think nuclear power is going to be realistic, unless, and this gets back to a previous thing. What if? I set up a cannon over here in my nuclear area. That sounds slightly dodgy. Over here, and start firing uranium-235 at the other planet. And it doesn't take much uranium to to keep a to keep a uranium power plant going, especially if you don't if you do it properly. I mean, over here, yeah, I've been I've been 
being stupid with it. I've just I've not put any sort of limit on it because I've got massive quantities of uranium. He says with the 93,000 left in that mine, uh, maybe I should be limiting this one. Uh, there's, there's another big mine over here with two and a half million in it. So there's loads of uranium on this planet, so it's not a concern. Um, and I'm here all the t a lot frequently, so again I can I can fix it. I can go and make a new uranium moon. But as you remember on Frost. I've got this cunning system with all these tanks down here, and when they all fill up, I turn the I turn the reactors off, and I could do that on Norvis as well, to be honest. I probably sh and I probably should. Um, it wouldn't be quite so good for the defence against the coronal mass ejections, but you know, Celebi. Um, I, I could turn it off when when there's a coronal mass ejection looming, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I could put in some more. T I could, I could, I could read off these tanks, and when they're un when it's under a million, then I could turn these, the, the, turn the reactors on, and then turn them off again when it's over a million. That would be probably a good idea, to be honest. I should do that. Um, and when you do that, you're, the the amount of uranium you get through is actually quite small. So I think it might be, it might be fairly practical. Can you ship? Yeah, and you can ship both types over there. So one of the things I was wondering, and I haven't actually looked up yet is when you're making your uranium fuel cells it takes 19238 you get a fuel cell and then you can't find out what and then you get a and then you get a spent fuel cell afterwards a five of those only make 3238 okay so i can, so i would need to ship both types of uranium out i wouldn't be able to rely on recycling the fuel cells to make enough 238 to make more fuel cells because it you get like three fifths of one back and it takes 19 to make one so that's not an option but if I ship both of them out there that will work so I think I might well do that because uranium just nuclear power is especially when you're that far from the Sun is just gonna be a much much better way to do it I think okay I've rambled quite a bit about that I mean this this is the the slight risk of me um, of me doing Factorio episodes after I've had, had a glass of whiskey or so <laughs> um, it, it causes me to, it makes me a bit rambly uh, let me know in, in the comments if this is better or worse than my normal episodes I'd be quite I'd be quite curious to know how you feel about it um, and, and whether it's and whether to be honest whether the rambling is interesting I suppose so then we've got back up here again I've not touched this since the last episode I've been too busy thinking about what I want to do next but I've been, I have pretty much come to a conclusion. So what I'm going to start doing is shipping coal up here by um, by delivery cannon, which I am already doing. Um, but there's enough up here, so it's not being sh shot up at the moment. And then I'm going to start doing um, the coal liquefaction up here in space, and making and making the oil up here. And I think I'm probably going to start making green and red circuits up here as well, because I've been running out of those like crazy. I mean, this 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 one here is supposed to have red circuits on that are going to be made into the into the um, the good old um, memory cards, and yeah, I, I, I need that. Basically, I need I need a huge number of those because all of the sciences are going to be taking getting getting through massive well, not so much getting through massive quantities of them. I'm just going to need huge quantities of them to build up the buffers on the on the belts like this, um, which is it's kind of wasteful, but. I think it's the way I'm. It's, it's the way I want to do this. It's, it's better than having the bots trying to deliver everything over longer distances. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to start shipping up, shipping coal up here, and then turning that into into oils and using that to make all of the the substance, the the extra things. And that's pretty much going to remove the need to bring things up here in barrels because let's have a look at the things we've got over here in barrels. We've got, okay, we've got that green one. I think is probably lube, and that's made from oil, so we don't need that. Blue one is water, which we're going to start bringing up as ice. Uh, the purple one is petroleum gas, and then we've got heavy oil, both of which are going to be made from the um, from the coal liquefaction. And then we would have light oil up here as well, except we've run out of it. So that's just the yeah, and that's but that's also made directly from the coal liquefaction. So that is going to get rid of my dependency on barrels. And as you know, barrels have been frustrating me for quite a long time now. So to get them completely out of the out of the chain of everything it's going to be really it's going to be fantastic and if we look at this rocket down here that was ready to go up half of the stuff in it is barrels all of this is just complete unnecessary nonsense and i'm going to be able to make sulfur up there as well because that's coal and petroleum gas i think um let's have a look sulfur 
and a water and petroleum gas. So those are going to both be up there. So I can start making all of these things up in space rather than shipping the shipping them up there in barrels and just having so many extra things to worry about packing into the rocket. I can just get rid of all of the raw ingredients. Plastic I can make up there potentially as well. So it's just going to be all these sort of things that are made out of lots of ingredients. Uh, I can get rid of the circuits. Uh, the blue circuits I'll probably keep maybe keep shipping up there man uh, manually. And I'm not sure about these ones. Uh, the science packs will definitely go up. Still go up by rocket though, because those those are complicated. I don't want to. I don't want to redo all of that in space. But it's going to make things so much simpler. Just having having oil processing being done up there in space. Now the slight downside of this um, is that you have to use a different pro a different machine to do it. So here we go. Here's the coal liquefaction. On down here on Norvis, I would use an oil refinery, which is um, uh, the, the standard way of doing it. But as it says, it can't be put on a space platform or in a spaceship, so I'm not going to be using that. Instead, I'm going to be using the biochemical facility, which can't be placed on land. That's the space-only version of it. Um, so I'm going to need to start making these. Now, these need to be made in space, in a space manufactory. So I can't just make a load of those and take them up with me. And they need, but they need stuff. Most of the stuff they need is already up there. So electric engine units, low density structures, and glass. That's already up there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking that up by rocket because it's just they're slightly more complicated. I may start making low density structures up there because there's nothing too difficult in there. Um, but and maybe pumps. I mean, pumps are stress. Pumps are simple, but they're just there's just so many steps required in them because of all the motor nonsense from the from the AAI mod. Um, so I'll, I may just take a load of those up with me. Uh, we'll we'll see. But then I can start doing all of the oil processing up there um, automat automatically, and um, and that should make that a little bit uh, all a little bit easier. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was what I've been thinking about regarding science. Um, but I've been talking for over half an hour now, so I think this is probably a good point to cut the episode, and I'll touch on all of that in the next one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think whilst I've not really done anything as such in this in this in since the last episode apart from get half my base blown up by a coronal mass ejection um yeah as we as, as we saw down here um i've done quite a lot of thinking and i think i think some of this is i think some of the thinking has been fairly valuable and is going to enable me to sort of you know jump forward with the next step so i think that's a um this is going to be about where I end it. As you can see up here, this blinking thing here is a bit of a, um, a sneak preview of what I'm planning to do next. I've had a bit of a think about science, and I think energy science is the way to go. But as to why that is, you'll have to wait for next time. I hope you'll join me for that. But uh, And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. It'll be all about science and science futures. <laughs> I'll see you then.